On the forums, I see two things happening often. When it comes to subwoofers, people have questions about impedance and wiring voice coils, and they also measure frequency response, but rarely ever measure the impedance. I'm seeing a disconnect here. So today, I'm going to measure the impedance of my subwoofer and kind of discuss what I'm seeing on the measurements and how it might help you decide how to wire your voice coils um, or your two drivers. That's the situation I'm against here is a single voice coil drivers, but two of them. And uh, how to match them up with your amp. In my case today, I'm using an iNuke 3000, pretty common amp. A lot of speculation out there that it's, it's rated at 2 ohms stable, but uh, maybe it uh, can't handle that so well. Well, I'm going to maybe put your mind at ease about that. Here's the subwoofer. It's um, a dual CSS 12. And i got to get it out of the way to begin. It's quite heavy, actually, even though they're only 12-inch drivers. I had them wired in series, so I'm just going to disconnect all that wiring and, and get this in parallel. Okay, I'm just setting up my laptop here. This is a Woofer Tester 2. I picked this up about five years ago used. And these are the drivers, Trio 12s. Sorry the frame doesn't show up, but I'm just hooking up the woofer tester to the drivers. And I run a couple sweeps. You can hear it there. I did it twice just to make sure everything's working out. Here you have the uh, results. You can see that um, uh, if you're not familiar with these graphs, you basically have frequency along the bottom and impedance along the y-axis. Um, I've only charted from 5 hertz up to 200 hertz, just because I'm not really interested above 200 hertz, so it's a waste of graph space. So the first thing I want to do is check the results against the spec sheet from Creative Sound Solutions. So let's have a look at that here. You can see a table with the specs. Uh, these are specs that are important, um, but I'm not looking at them today. I've already checked these out another time. It's kind of beyond the scope of this video. So for now, we're just going to focus on these specs here. As mentioned, this is the resonance frequency and the DC resistance. These are two quick things you can check pretty easily to make sure you're within spec and doing okay. All right, so again, uh, back to the results I got. Uh, here we can, on the right hand, uh, left hand side, sorry, we can see that the DC resistance is sloping down to about 4 ohms, which match, matches the factory specs. And the resonance frequency, FS, is also sitting really close to 22 hertz, which is the factory spec. So I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, now I'm just detaching it from the, the free driver and hooking it up to the cab. Um, again, I've wired this in parallel for the purpose of this test. And there was the sweep. Okay, here's the results. You can see things look a little differently, but because this is a sealed enclosure, we still have basically a resonance frequency and slopes down to DC resistance, and then up near 100 hertz and up we get uh, inductance taking over. So let's have a look at how this compares to the driver free air. Okay, so you can see there are some changes here. So the changes primarily include that FS has now moved up to resonance of box, um, which is expected. It moves up in frequency. And we can also see the DC resistance is dropped in half because we have two drivers wired in parallel. So now we're close to 2 ohms. Okay, now we are going to look at the driver or the cab results alone again. And I've plotted on there the 2 ohm line so it's easier to see. And look at that. All the impedance from 5 hertz and up is above 2 ohms. 
and today we're talking about driving this as a 2 ohm load into the iNUC. So you can see here that at no frequency above 5 hertz, and I can tell you actually all the way down to DC, 0 hertz, there is, there's no impedance that drops below 2 hertz. So this is the point. I'm not really worried about this amp. And when we look at this a little bit closer and we look at uh, kind of the meat and potatoes, I call it, the um, demanding range of about 20 hertz to 80 hertz, typical subwoofer crossover, you can see most of this lies above 4 ohms. Um, and the parts that don't stay above 4 ohms barely dip below, 3 ohms at minimum. Um, so this gives me even more assurance that the really demanding not that less than 20 hertz isn't demanding for an amp, but where most of the contents is sitting um, on these typical subwoofer tracks nowadays is actually sitting really close to a 4 ohm load. Um, not that I would call this a 4 ohm load, but it's another piece of the data to consider. Okay, so this is just wrapping it up. I got all this. So, to recap, we saw in the measurements that two 4 ohm drivers wired in parallel aren't such a nasty impedance load after all. They never go below 2 ohms, so it's not really a 2 ohm load. When I'm looking to add more subwoofers to my amplifier, I have no problem using channel B at another 2 ohm load. And the other thing is, um, I was able to see that my measurements match the factory specs. I can rely on them to make box size decisions. So anyways, I hope that was helpful. Subscribe, all that stuff that every YouTuber says, and we'll see you on the next video.